Hi, unfortunately it's me again and I have been playing around with the Niagara system and thought that I could make a cool tutorial on how to create this sort of particle simulation with this black hole in the middle. And it's kind of evolving and it has a cool surrounding and it has, well it does have post-processing going on but we're gonna ignore it. So, let's build it from scratch. This is future editing Nils. I failed to mention in the beginning that if you don't want to stick through this video and just want to download this project, go to my Patreon. It's available for like four or five bucks. You can download it and you will get exactly this scene with all of those exposed parameters where you can adjust the flow of the, the, flow of the particles as well as the size of the particles and how strong and how many there are going to be. So if you want to save some time and have a couple of bucks to support this channel, feel free to go to the Patreon. The link is below, but now let's get to the tutorial. For starters, I'm going to create a new level and just call it a uh, tutorial trial. So we are really going to start from scratch. Let's put in some basic lighting, directional light, skylight, sky atmosphere. There you go. Should be sufficient enough. Some volumetric clouds so it looks cool. And a plane so that we see what is actually going on. After we've set up our level, let's just go ahead and create a new VFX Niagara system. System from selected emitters. Next, click on hanging particles. This is just going to be our baseline and click finish. We are going to call it a tutorial Niagara. There you go, double click on it and you should have this window like this. Right now it's spawning a couple of particles that are just floating in the air and we can delete a lot of this stuff right now. So scale color we don't need, scale sprite size, curl noise for now and the drag we're gonna leave. For the sprite render we're gonna delete that as well and get a mesh renderer. Perfect. And under the mesh renderer, you get this little arrow, this little array element here, meshes, and you're gonna put in cube, for instance, or for that matter, anything that you want. And it's going to spawn a lot of cubes with the default material. I created another material called tessellation. This one is really just, you know, I give it a black color, specular, and a bit of roughness. So we're gonna go for enable material override plus open it up open it up and i call it tessellation tessellation there you go and now all of our blocks have this cool material on it we're gonna click on this material as a whole and uh, under this option we set gpu compute simulation that's making it a lot worse but don't worry about that we're gonna fix it also also under the render tab on mesh render we're gonna see the facing mode it's going to be on velocity and before i forget it under the general options look for mesh scale and where it says unset go to uniform that will fix up a lot of this now we're gonna make it stop clipping it's clipping because there are a lot of blocks inside of each other and they just the computer just don't know the computer just doesn't know how to really show us all of this so we are going to change the scale scale mesh size and this is going to be this is going to be a vector from curve there you go i'm gonna drag this down to something more sensible let's say 0 0.1 works for me and now you can see that over a lifetime they're shrinking. This is great and all. Now this is looking mighty fine. Now that we have our basic setup done, we can add some forces. Again, under the partic particle update, let's give it some wind. And those parameters are just, you know, you can change it however you want and play around with the scales. And I'm gonna show you just in a second how you can make it very easy and iterative. Wind force, I'm gonna change the wind speed to 25 and wind speed scale to 20. Gravity, we're gonna get a gravity. This we just don't wanna change, really. And a point, point attraction force. Yes, why not? And this point attraction force is, let's give it like a hundred. 
sure, but let's make it more broad so that everything is sticking to it. Perfect. Make it a bit broader. Yes, there you go. Vortex, vortex force makes it spin. So just having a vortex force, let's see. Just having a vortex force kind of makes it spin in a circle. If you combine it with the gravity and the point attraction force, there it goes. 6,000 might be a bit high, so I'm just gonna put in 600. This seems about right. Again, those are parameters that you can play around with later on if you want to. Now let's give it some randomness. Curl, noise, force. Yes, it's going to compute a bit and we're gonna play with the frequency. Let's say it's just one and the noise strength. We wanna attract it, give it a, let's say 7,000, a 7,000. This is going to look crazy and everything is just flying around and flowing around to make it a bit more attractive to us. Let's increase maybe the spawn rate, right? From 50 to 250. This looks already a bit better and you can see where we're going. 500 should be no problem at all as well. This kind of looks cool already, but we're gonna make it even cooler on adding plus another curl noise curl noise force give this one an attraction and put the frequency to three and now the magic happens if we add if we're gonna use the drag and the drag from eight to ten now look what happens we can see that there is a lot of cool stuff going on this is sort of what we had in the beginning so again, we're gonna increase the spawn rate to a thousand five hundred, not fifteen thousand, but a thousand five hundred. You can adjust this parameter anytime, but right now a thousand five hundred seems to be cool. Changing those parameters every time in this editor might be a bit tedious, and we don't really don't want that. So let's add some user exposed components. Say it's a float. Perfect. And this float we're going to name spawn rate influence now if we click on this blue button here under the user parameters spawn rate influence 2000 all right this is now exposed to us and we're gonna see what i'm gonna show you what that means in a second right here but now we have a default value in spawn rate influence so if we're gonna put spawn rate influence and drag it into our spawn rate now the spawn rate is whatever we put into this value that we can change from outside this system let's do this a couple more times with a couple of other settings and in the end it could look something like this i put the curl one frequency the curl one strength curl two particle float scale how big they are the scale factor and the vortex amount, how much it's going to spin around. And if we simulate it, it sort of looks like this. I got my user parameters, one, 6,000, three, minus 7,000, this curve for curve floats, and the vortex amount is 640. And then it looks like this. But for the tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it with the spawn rate. And now we're going to, now we're going back into our level and we can save this, you know save going back into our level all right tutorial niagara we can just drag and drop it in here and see what it does we misjudged the scale of all of this so i'm just gonna increase the scale of this plane so it doesn't look as mighty perfect now we just see what it does and we can we can adjust the values if we click on here now we see all of the exposed parameters right here so we only exposed the spawn rate influence, which, which means that if I put like 15,000 in here, there's going to be a lot of those just flowing around, doing its stuff. If you want it to be more iterative, if you want it to be more exciting and do some, something else, oh, I forgot to mention it. We can go to the first curl noise, pan noise, and say something like 0.3. Now it's going to move a bit more. Save. 
and it's going to move a bit more and move around. Whenever you see this flickering, it's calculating and your GPU might be a bit in trouble. So we're gonna reduce to 5,000, which is already a lot. And this is great. So you've got your first particle system and it will follow wherever you're gonna put it, which is already a very, very cool effect. However, the example video in the beginning, I showed you that we can make this sort of black hole kind of sphere. And this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to give in a sphere, put it in here. There you go. This is our, our black hole sphere. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and give it a new material. Glow tutorial. Don't mind my spelling mistakes. If you press the number three and left click, you get a three scalar parameter. Additionally, you can put in threes up, or you can just con type in const three vector, which is the same, just for our color purposes. There you go, we're gonna give it into the base. One and left click gives you just a normal scalar, a normal parameter. One and left click for the next one. So roughness is zero, but roughness is going to be extremely rough we don't want to see the inside. It should not reflect any light at all. Just absorbing light. Perfect. Now we're going to get the Fresnel. Right click on exponent. Promote the parameter. And we can say this is like a five. To know what this looks like, we just put it into emissive color. Kill like the base color. We don't want that. So and now we're going to use this as a mask. You can see there's black and white values. So if we contrast it, Con contrast, cheap contrast result. We're gonna right click on contrast, promote the parameter, parameter. I never can say the word parameter as well. And just say 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Yeah, there you go. Now you have nothing. It's just gonna contrast between white and gray. So we're gonna say this is our contrast that we want. And we're gonna use this as a mask. So three on the keyboard and left click for another constant three vector. We're going to give it the color of red. Perfect. Drag out something called multiply. So we put this in emissive color. The multiplier is just sort of a how emissive is it? If I say it's like 150, it's going to be more emissive. If it's a 5000, that's goddamn, you know, I'll see that like sun emissive, right? That is like crazy emissive. Okay, so if you want to, you can parameterize this one as well. Just right click and uh, promote the parameter if you want to. We are going to multiply this value, multiply with this one right here. Because if you remember emissive color, everything multiplied by black, which is the value zero, will be zero. Everything multiplied by the value white, which is one, will be the 5000 in our exp in our case. So we put it into this multiplication node and this one in emissive color and we should have a ring around it. Yes. And now you can play around with the colors as you please. Maybe you don't want it to be this bright so you can turn down the emissive color, right? Maybe you don't want it to be harshly contrasted. Maybe you don't want it to be contrasted at all. Or maybe you want the Fresnel to be more aggressive. A slimmer outline, a bit more of this kind of Dark Souls Elden Ring vibe. I'm gonna put the multiplier back to 5000. So we get this nice and cool glow. 5000 is too much, 3000. Put it in here, perfect. This is our material, save it. And we're gonna give the glow tutorial to this sphere. Additionally, I don't want this to throw shadows. Shadow, cast shadow, no, so we don't have a shadow anymore. Perfect. And now we want to make it all glow. To make everything dark, we're going to the, we're going to hide the sky atmosphere, the skylight, sky atmosphere, the directional light, and the volumetric clouds, and also this plane. Now we see that we don't see anything, so we're going to get our Exponential height fog, drag it into the scene. And we're gonna look for volumetric fog. 
and enable it. Uh, nothing really has changed. So we're gonna delete volumetric fog up here and change the fog density to one. All right, that's a crazy example of what we're going to do. We don't want it to be one. We maybe want it to be 0 0.1. Seems about right. To give more of this red glow effect, get in the lights, get a point light, make the point light red, yes. And drag the point light into our sphere, which is not casting any shadows because we, we closed that down. Let's turn up the attenuation radius actually. And now we can say, you can turn up the intensity if you want to, turn it down and turn up the volumetric intensity. And we can go crazy now with our Niagara system. 1,500. And let it bake for a second and see what is going on. And just let it calculate for a hot minute. Adjusting the parameters and levels to this will result in something like this one right here. Something very cool and very aesthetic. So now you can play around with all of your parameters. For me, for example, I can say the curl fre frequency could be a bit more higher, like two, and the curl strength is a lot higher, like 8,000, 8, maybe this does something cool. Now we see that it's very center heavy. I don't want the fog to be this dense. So I'm gonna say 0 0.5 maybe. Looks good to me. And I hope it looks good to you. And I hope that I could guide you into the right direction. Oh, by the way, if you want to turn off all, if you want to turn off all of those symbols, press the G button on your keyboard and you have a clearer view of what is going on. All right, fellas, I hope that I could help you. I hope that I could nudge you into the right direction into creating some awesome particle flow simulations like this one and make it more aesthetic. If you have any suggestions on what I should cover next, what I should do next, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, if you have any troubles, I am going to read all of the comments that are coming in, so I might just be able to help you. Check out my website and my Patreon as well if you want to support this channel. And thank you for your attention.